Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I did not shave this weekend, and so I'm finishing up my shaving right now. This weekend was a very rough weekend for me, and that is because this was Fantasy Football Weekend, which I've told you. One second. Alright, we about got it worked out. This was a very rough weekend for me because it was Fantasy Football Weekend, and on that weekend... If you mess up in your fantasy football draft, you do a shot, and that is the problem. Um, so I only did two videos this weekend, but that won't, won't normally happen. Now, um, and I'll tell you it, one of the situations that happened in my draft, if you're up at the drafting board and anybody gets just the a little bit of a hint that you tried to pick someone who was already on the board and had already been picked, that means you weren't paying attention and you do a shot so I was literally at the board and I'm looking through the stack of stickers to pick my guy and I look up at the board and I realize he's been picked and just for a brief second I turned around to look at all the guys to see if they caught <laughs> that I was about to pick somebody who had already been picked and there was already a guy literally over at the machine getting me a, a, Jaeger, a Jägermeister shot, which makes me want to throw up even thinking about I hate Jägermeister. I don't know who created Jägermeister. It's like cough medicine. It's awful. But I did what I had to do, and they, they did not let me off the hook on that. And so that <laughs> was what my weekend was like. And then my Monday starts off slow. I get a call from my wife this morning. I was about to do this video get a call from my wife and my seven-year-old says that I need to come to the school because he has he feels like he has a dry skin uh, on his face or whatever so I had to take Vaseline up there and I'm sitting there thinking when I was a kid if the janitor was not sprinkling that orange stuff in the hallway because I had just thrown up all over the hallway I wasn't getting out of school and nobody was coming to see me that was just the way it was I think that we've turned our children into wimps now <laughs> Well, enough of that. <laughs> so I'm back. I did just have to uh, do a shave because my uh, I didn't uh, take the time to do it this weekend. But the great information keeps on coming in this uh, Ripple and XRP community here. Um, so this first thing I wanted to show you is from Hodor. Now, I, have, I don't think I've talked about Hodor's blog in a while. But this guy is one of the first people that... Um, you know, I've told you that Alex Cobb and Jungle Inc. were the guys that I kind of, they inspired me to start a YouTube channel. But one of the people who who I first read that um, inspired me to, or I guess inspired, the, well, maybe that is the right word, but um, I read his stuff and I said, you know what, I've been right about this all along and this guy's very smart and he's confirming everything I've, everything I've ever felt about what Ripple was and what XRP represented. This guy's confirming it for me. And he was one of the early people that I was reading where I was like, wow, I've been, I was correct about this. It was a validation for me. So every once in a while when he does his blog, I like to read, I, I read something in there that really is inspiring to me. And I found something today I wanted to read to you. Um, he says, the champions behind XRP were part of this initial crypto revolution, and some of Ripple's founders and first employees and executives were part of this early group of Bitcoin millionaires. But they understood the nature of the technology itself in a way that was missing from, Bitcoin, from the Bitcoin protectionists. Instead, they forged their own way using blockchain technology to not, uh, not to isolate and protect their new coin, but to connect it. To connect it to with as many other currencies, both fiat and crypto, as they could. They even created entirely new interoperable technology, Interledger, to accomplish this. And now, years later, we are seeing several major plans starting to bear fruit. 
each of these projects has a gargantuan potential market. It's not about win, lose, or protecting though. It's about connecting and creating something much greater. The people behind XRP's champion organization are, are first class visionaries and business leaders. Not only will they succeed, XRP will rise and prove their vision in the most spectacular way possible. It will upend the social crypto, the social order of crypto. This line I love. It will upend the social order of crypto. Their vision will burn the chafe. I don't know if I said that word. I think that's right. And reveal the difference between an obsolete, environmentally destructive technology and one designed to better the world at the speed of information. Um, but I love this. It will up in the social order of crypto. And this is what I fully believe, folks. I believe that there's going to be a day when everybody wakes up and XRP has flipped Bitcoin never to look back. And I believe that it will be, I believe the Bitcoin people will literally be going crazy. I'm talking about Looney Tune because it'll be the day that all of us in the XRP community knew would come and they will not be happy at all. Um, okay, next, um, I need to go back to that blog because I, li I, I like some of those lines. Okay, XRP Crypto Wolf, Ripple's head, this is an article where Ripple's head of um, social impact, Ken Weber, said the crypto industry needs specialized education. By the way, does your digital asset have a uh, company that's working on a large use case for it who has a head of social impact? <laughs> I bet they don't. Um, said the crypto industry needs specialized education. There's a 517% increase in demand for blockchain engineers. Weber said that over 40% of the top 50 universities offer at least one blockchain and crypto class. This is what it's all about, folks. I've told the story on this channel about how I visited the Georgia Tech campus back in the 80s, or maybe, yeah, it was the 80s, and my cousin took us to the computer lab there and showed us a mouse, the mouse that you now use with your computer. And he said, this will be with all computers in all homes one day. And we just thought, what in the world is that thing? And that is how all of this gets going at the universities, folks, at the MITs, the Georgia Techs, the Stanfords, in these engineering labs and, and computer labs, all of this is born, the things we use, that's where it all starts. And that's what's so awesome. One of the many things that is so awesome about it being affiliated with this digital asset and this company Ripple, because they are smart enough to know that and they've got that blockchain initiative going uh, in universities. It's so brilliant. Every aspect of this is brilliant. Okay. Next, um, this guy deserves all kinds of credit um, for what's going on right now. This guy was calling it when nobody else was. Love for Crypto. I think it's a group of guys. Now, they have a channel. Love for Crypto is the YouTube channel as well. So get, go give them a follow. It says the two most prestigious central banks in complete synchronization. Get it? Bob Way, how did it go? Once two central banks start using a superior settlement infrastructure, then the rest of the world will follow. The rest was history. And he's put in here a few of these pictures. This is from the other day where the Bank of England, Carney, had say, said that a new virtual currency could ease, uh, ease reliance on the US dollar. And then we've got this. He's talking about the Triffin Dilemma. Refers to the double-edged sword of possessing a currency that serves as the world's reserve currency. If a private cryptocurrency were to replace a given world, world reserve currency, th this would eliminate the dilemma of that current for that currency. Um, and then this is the, that picture that has Brad Garlinghouse. Look at some of the people in this picture. Um, Ross Lecklow, IMF. Um, there's Christine Lagarde for the, from the IMF. Let me find you another good one. Um, um, there, I think there's a couple of more central bankers or somebody like that. This guy is with CEO of Luxembourg House of Financial Technology. Um, let me see if they might the most interesting people here. Head of FinTech Office of Bank of Indonesia. So the writing's been on the wall for quite a while, people. But unfortunately, a lot of us in the XRP community are the only ones that have been paying attention. Are you paying attention now, folks? Because as I said... This doesn't happen 
without the United States being on board. All right, next, uh, Mr. B at XRP Mr. Um, sent me this. Now, this, no, I want to be, I want to give a disclaimer here. I am not showing you this because I'm saying that this guy is a thousand percent right in what he's saying. I'm intrigued by this Twitter handle right here. This guy popped up on my radar the other day, and I'm going to show you three or four tweets that captured my attention. I'm not telling you that this guy knows what he's talking about. I'm not telling you he's some kind of insider. What I'm telling you is that his tweet, I don't see tweets coming out like this from anybody very often. And when I see it, it comes up on my radar. And like many of you, look, he's got 366 likes on this tweet. So obviously it's not just me that's a little bit intrigued. I'm just presenting this to you for what it is worth. And you can decide if you think this guy's full of crap or if you think that he's, that he, that he's got some really interesting things that's being said here. Ripple currently holds 50.4 billion XRP in escrow. They will stop all over the counter sales of, 50, of at 50 billion. This 50 billion is what will be handed over to the IMF. 50% XRP in circulation for 7 billion plus people, companies, banks, etc., and 50% supply for the elite. IMF World Bank. Money equals power. And then there was this tweet. Some people simply cannot grasp how close we are to seeing XRP shatter everything. Central banks have lost control. Currencies are crashing against gold and the USD. If the central banks don't launch XRP very soon, they will lose the confidence of the public and lose power to stop companies like Facebook from launching their own currencies. Central banks will do anything to keep hold of their power. Federal Reserve's FedNow system is rubbish and shelled. They're using Ripple Tech. There's a reason Brad Garlinghouse was at that Swiss Central Bank meeting. Now, the one thing I want to say here is I do remember when they when they announced the Libra coin, Facebook uh, or, or Brad Garlinghouse came out and said something to the effect of that he thought that their launch was kind of half-baked, which immediately told me that Brad Garlinghouse and 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 his people might be at odds with the, the Libra thing. In other words, XRP might be the anti-Libra. In other words, XRP is the one aligned with the banks, and the banks see the Libra as evil, trying to, to get rid of them. So I, there, this some of this makes sense here. That's why I'm showing it to you. And then, same guy tweets this. What better anchor is there for a new system and currencies to value against while creating a level playing field for international trade than the merger of physical and digital gold? XRP is waiting for an announcement. TA and charts mean nothing while it's being manipulated lower. By incoherent, both Bernanke and Lipsky meant that there was no anchor for the system, no universally agreed reference point or metric by which to judge currency values. You can judge every currency in relation to another currency, yet there's no way to judge any currency by an objective standard under current rules. And then this might be the most interesting exchange to me. Due to the rapidly deteriorating situation of the global economy, I'm being told the chances of back launching with XRP has risen to 80%. Regulations will come sooner. Early, mid-September, I have never heard anything bordering on this right here, folks. Never heard anything bordering on this. So this guy either has a source or he is just making things up as he goes. It's as simple as that. Well, here's the interesting part of this. First to ask, being told by who? <laughs> okay, he's asked, being, being told this by who? And his response is fascinating to me. When we are ready to spend our lives in prison and pay huge fines and lose our jobs, we will broadcast all the details for now, take it or leave it. <laughs> wow, that one kind of hit me. I was like, what? Okay, all right, Chinu Patel at Chinu Patel 29. This is one of my favorite rhythm trader tweets that I've ever read. Breaking, the Turkish lira just fell 15% in a matter of seconds. Only keep as much fiat in your bank as you're willing to lose. And that's a takeoff, of course. We always say don't invest more in crypto than you're willing to lose. And I think Rhythm Trader may be have it, have it right right here. Only keep as much fiat in your banks as you're willing to lose. Because when the bail-ins come, 
they're going to take it from you. They're going to take some percentage of it. And so, <laughs> yeah, keep only as much fiat in your bank account as you're willing to lose, folks. Um, and keep that XRP on a Ledger Nano S where they can't take it. Bitcoin has been pronounced dead 373 times now. Wired um, called it dead, pronounced it dead at 1330. Forbes at 1515. Bloomberg at 9357. Washington Post at 182. Guardian at 318. Reuters, uh, Reuters at 327. Business Insider at 433. New York Times at 955. Proving them wrong has never been so profitable. I agree with you. I wanted to give a, a congrats to Vite Savin, who is the greatest uh, XRP developer ever created. Back from our lovely summer holiday with amazing news, Arwen, who is their uh, child, is going to be a big sister. And so, and, and I don't know what he's showing here, um, but apparently he is having another child, so congratulations to him. Um, next, from Seven Figure Fella, there is someone who has just made the digital asset investor thumbnail for the day. And that is this guy, Stephen uh, Gukwa, I guess is how you say that. Redo, uh, he had sent out a couple of photos, but this is the one I liked. Um, how about that for a thumbnail for the digital asset investors video? You will be the thumbnail. And finally, folks, don't know if you've seen this. I was talking about it the other day that there was an announcement that um, and it was, uh, I think it was Brian, was it Brian Cranston? No, it was the guy that played the lawyer in um, Breaking Bad said that they had already filmed the movie for Breaking Bad. I didn't even know they were filming a movie. And now there's a trailer. Apparently it's going to be on Netflix and it's going to be called El Camino, a Breaking Bad movie teaser 2019. Um, and I think, and he says, just for you, D.A., I so thank you very much, Sergeant Obi-Wan. This is awesome. And guess what? I was I was uh, having dinner last night with a friend who's also a huge Breaking Bad fan. And he told me, because in the trailer, Walter White is not in the trailer, so it almost makes you think he's dead. I was This guy told me, so don't quote me, but he told me that Walter White is going to be in the movie. So I don't know where he got that, but he said Walter White is is going to be in the movie so you can, to me you can't have a breaking bad movie without walter white well guess what i'm the digital asset investor i'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that my seven-year-old needed me to go to his school today to put some vaseline on his dry skin what has this world come to thank you for listening